All right, so today we've got us a walk-in cooler that they said was getting a little too close for comfort for warmth. I get here and it's about 37 degrees area. They said it was 39 and a half earlier. So it wasn't running or calling for it to run. Uh, the thermostat's mounted right on the side of the evaporator. Kicked it on. I replaced the evaporator fan on this thing uh, in October of 20. And our suction pressure is looking fairly decent. Our sight glass is full. And we haven't gone into a defrost lately. So it's only set up for 30 minutes of defrost anyway, twice per 24 hours. The condenser coil is a little dirty. It's not as bad as I've seen, but the evaporator is looking a little bit bad. So from what I'm seeing between the thermostat that looks like it's practically brand new, uh, was probably their first step, and then the coil is pretty pretty bad. So we're going to take that low profile coil apart and clean it. So we're going to go back down there and look at that section because right now everything looks uh, pretty good refrigerant wise I'm not seeing any bubbles at all in there so we'll go ahead and throw this thing into a defrost flash technically since it's timed off anyway we'll uh, make it go into pump down that way we can shut her down without flood back when we kick it back on that one I did not do they don't have a date on it. That one does. You can see mine's crimp-ons. There's just wire nuts. The store was remodeled, so they've got new RTUs, a new fancy makeup air unit, but they kept the old equipment for the uh, refrigeration and for the ice machines. So uh, they did get kind of fancy here compared to some of them. Uh-oh, she shut down. So, but yeah. Looks like it's been working, surprisingly. Good. Hands there. Let's see if it's got any... Sh no, no short cycle protection at all. Nice. Yeah. You can tell this has got very low airflow volume. Coil starting to freeze up. It's pretty cool out today. I mean, we're barely probably in the 60s. This has no fan cycle control on it. We didn't install it, so. And let's see if the filters are partially clean. Yeah, they're not too bad. So, it's not what we're here for, but I will mention it to their maintenance person. I'd say it probably has got some mild issues, or just because they didn't run a fan cycle control kit on it, which probably wasn't the uh, best decision. So anyhow, let's get started on what we are here to do. This thing is R22. Um, she did pump down, so we'll go downstairs, see if we can get this uh, cover off the evaporator. All right, so you can see here, we got it down, and it's definitely got some air restriction to it. There and there, so we're not getting the best of airflow through it. This side here's a little better, but still ain't that great. We're gonna sweep this off and it'll get a good majority of it. Looks like we're pretty good where it's not packed full. But we'll sweep this thing out and get it cleaned up along with some of these motors here. They just are looking a little bit uh, comfortable there. The drain line looks a little bit ratty too. Good old aluminum. You see the uh, drain line comes apart there, which was kind of nice. But go get the vacuum cleaner. All right, the old Milwaukee got a good portion of it out of here. It uh, looks much better than what it did. It uh, got a little scraggle here and there, but for the most part, we got all of it out of there. You can see right through it. You're never gonna get it perfect, uh, other than maybe to wash it out. But it uh, it's clean. 
We got our terminals there look good from what I see. I bet you that got pulled loose. Yeah, so those aren't going to run, so I'll have to hook those back up here in a second. Kind of crappy the way they designed that with very little room to spare for length of wires. Kind of a cruddy design. So much garbage in here. Good grief. Yeah, it's nice. I think I found something. This wire looked really corroded. It had been getting down in the pan and getting wet. I got an undersized wire nut on there. Um, so we're going to restrip that. That goes up to the thermostat there, which in reality, it'd been nice if they would have just ran it directly to the thermostat instead of using these hodgepodge connector wires in between. So we're going to get that done. We've got the uh, motor terminal hooked back on there and uh, go from there. I swept this off a little bit more. I think it really needs garden hosed out, but. So we got these out and these out. We're going to clean those up because that's still kind of a mess. Wipe all that out and uh, we should have some good airflow when we get done here. All right, so these look a lot better now than what they did. Kind of convenient, get a nice little horse bay there, so scrubbing them up pretty good. Not gonna make a huge difference, but it's gonna definitely make it better than what it was. So we just kicked it back on. Gotta set our clock here. Bell fall apart. That's it, pretty doggone close. I'm gonna go ahead and watch this thing uh, drop down in temp. Make sure everything's working the way it should. We'll see where it shuts off at. Just gotta put a few of these screws back together and uh, we'll see where we're at. Every one of these jobs usually ends up turning into a PM if you want to call it that. Otherwise, you just fix the, the symptom and ignore all the other problems. You're just gonna be back later and then they're gonna wonder why you didn't do it to begin with. So. I usually go through and try to get everything. It's not like I want to do it, but you got to do it. It's your job. There's things that uh, got to be done, and if you want to walk away confidently that that's uh, been done correctly, then you've got to do it. So clean all the fan blades and all that wasn't uh, the main problem. Uh, the coil definitely didn't help it none. I think some of its majority is the thermostat, which I got to call and find out what's the deal on that. But Otherwise, what we did is going to make better airflow, which is going to cool it down quicker, be less swings in temperature, stuff like that. So let's just watch this and see what we get. Figured I'd be a nice guy and check the belt on this one. The other train unit down there is a uh, drag drive. You can hear it talking to you. Shut off too. Might double check that pulley. It did not adjust very well. It's not what I'm here for, so I don't want to do too much. Get myself in trouble. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah, it sounds like it's not aligned right. Oh, jeez. Yeah, that, that V's completely screwed. That's why it's squawking. I don't think we take care of their HVAC. So we'll just leave it alone. Let the other professionals that's been maintaining it take care of it, I guess. Get what you pay for, I guess. According to this, we're dropping pretty quick. I think it was up to 50 earlier. Not been running that long. Oh, you can feel it. Oh yeah, kind of quiet. It sounds all industrial and stuff. Yeah, you can.
that's real accurate. So if that's 34, it's got better airflow now. This thing here probably is not calibrated, which wouldn't surprise me. Might want to calibrate. I think it's drawing too much attention to itself because it's probably not accurate and causing them to dink around with stuff when they really don't need to. I mean, there's nothing wrong with being safe, but if you're, you're causing more problems than you need, it, uh, yeah, you can see it kind of blowing. Blowing the dust around a lot better now. That actually might be fairly accurate. I was reading 40 out there at 41 here. Let's see how accurate this other thing is. That's their thermometer there, and of course, you know, you're blowing cold air onto it, so it's going to be lower. I mean, about seven tenths. I think it's kind of funny that thing's starting to go up in temperature there. It's a degree off. Of course, you know, these aren't treated with care, these usually are dropped, and you name it. I think the reason why it's going up in temperature is when I feel the liquid line, it's cold, it shut off. I've got this thing set at 30. I, I don't like these bulbs when they're up here. I had problems with another low profile one not too long ago doing something similar to this. I mean, we'll sometimes even mount the bulb on, uh, in front of the fan blade there. It, um, it's obviously off. So we're running 34 and a half supposedly there. 36 over here. And... 36 there, 41 over there. These low profile coolers suck because they just throw it everywhere but where you really necessarily want it. Um, kind of watching to see, it must be on the off cycle again. It just doesn't run very long. It's probably, wouldn't surprise me if it ain't oversized. It's running though, it's got heat. I can feel the heat on the liquid line. So it should be dropping. I'm pretty sure it just shut off, but you can see we got a dead spot over here. And that's not gonna be the most accurate place for it. There's no good place with one of these type of evaporators. I like the ones that are normal, you know, traditional against the back wall shooting outwards. Um, it just shut off, I'm almost positive it did. Let's see if we can feel heat still. hard to tell it might be pumping down it's kind of hard to tell yet but if that's the case we may have to set it well below 30 to get to where we want it at thing is product temperature is what's really important but unfortunately depending on who you're dealing with they may not be looking at that as closely my feeling is it's 34 degrees in here rotate it up a touch and get it shut off. So right there, as you said, it's basically set about 28 degrees to get where we're at. You can teeter tot that thing just a little bit, but you can see, I mean, you're getting heat off the ceiling. I, I, I every one of them I've had like this, it's always been a problem getting accurate temperature measurements. Now what caused that to drop all of a sudden? You'd think my body temperature would have actually made it go up, not down, so it must be bouncing off me. I've still not been able to get a hold of their maintenance guy, so how much time do I waste waiting around to find out whether or not he just changed this thing or what? I moved it up to 30, I think I heard it click. Now you gotta sit here and play the waiting game, see whether or not it stays underneath the, the, the zone they're wanting. I think they're wanting like 36. They're very, very particular about their temperatures. Yeah, it stopped. So we got 33 here. We continue to play down in this colder area, then we're gonna start getting freeze ups. The defrosts are only set for half an hour and they're set for two of them per 24 hour, which if you're gonna start trying to make a beer cooler out of this, I recommend at least four of them and usually up to as much as an hour. But then you're gonna have a heck of a swing on your temperatures. So it's really need to talk to their maintenance guy to know what exactly their expectations are and how critical they're going to be about this thing. So I went ahead and lowered this about two degrees, almost three, and uh, that's more accurate for what is actually over there on that side of the uh, box. 
Um, it's not necessarily accurate for where it's at at the temperature, but since there's no food right there, I'm more interested in what it is actually in the box. So um, we got, like I said, 38 area. And we got 34 there. Up here we've got 36. So really it's not even accurate for that either. So we do a little more tweaking. So there we are at 36. It's still a degree higher than what it really is. We got 34.3 and 36.6 here. Now we just gotta wait and see whether or not this thing comes back on on its own. If it does, I don't really care what the numbers are as long as it holds the differential. I finally got my call back from the maintenance guy. So the thermostat might have been replaced by another company because that's not a stat we carry. We use the ones with the remote bulb. Um, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and add an extra defrost to this because we are pushing it kind of cooler than what it's been running. Uh, he's shooting for 36 degrees on an average. Talked to him about how it was checked, by who, and all that. It wasn't necessarily a health department, but more of their own personal inspectors. So we got that. I am going to try it set right now at 30. I don't care if it said 65 degrees as long as it's holding 36 when it's all said and done. Uh, he knows that, he agrees with that. So depending on how it goes, if it don't do it by setting it at 30, we're gonna get a digital one, which we don't usually stock or use. Uh, it's a 208 uh, fan motor. Uh, then uh, I'll just power it off the fan motors and then wire it into the solenoid, which is down there. And then we'll go from there. So. Um, Otherwise, the sight glass still is full, and uh, the fan blades and all that stuff are clean, so it's in better working condition than what it was when we found it, and uh, that's about it for right now. I told him about some of the HVAC equipment, and like I figured, uh, another company's taking care of that, so we'll let them deal with that. That's uh, on them. So other than that, that's going to wrap this one up. If you guys liked it and you know what to do, give it the big thumbs up and subscribe. Until next time, guys, we will catch you on the next one. All right, so we're doing a startup on some of this equipment. We pumped some of it down because they didn't have solenoids. Went ahead and got that valve opened up. Got to turn the power onto it. Got these little gizmos over here. These are all old, uh, running on 414B. So these, I believe, were pumped down with the solenoids. So we got to turn power onto that and uh, basically just kind of Get them ready. It's ice cream season already, believe it or not, even though it's only February. They run uh, full service here, food and everything. So they open up uh, after shutting down for just a couple months. So we've got a reaching cooler that's in there. It's not one to come on. So it, uh, we've checked this little cooler here. This thing's like old school big time. So... I went ahead and unplugged it because this is how they turn the evaporators on and off. They just plug them in. They got a thermostat here that loops one leg of power down and back again to make the compressor run. I'm assuming since my pressure is really low and they pumped it down that it's got a leak. It's R22, so I've got the leak detector warming up. We're going to pop that front face cover thing off there and see if there's a solenoid in there, which I do not think there is. So I was kind of hoping that We'll scan it real quick, which, like I said, there's no no pressure in there, so it's probably not going to do anything until we add some. Okay, so one big advice that I would give you is when you're having issues like this where, you know, it's not calling, suction pressure, make sure you put the high side gauge on there. About the time you don't, you may end up having something pumped down somewhere, like later on down in the system somewhere, in one of the valves. Well, as you see here, we have nothing. So this thing's completely empty. So we're just gonna go ahead and throw some trace in it, and then we're gonna go ahead and throw some nitrogen behind it. See if we can find this. This thing is a, a wandering mess all over the place. The line sets come out, go through the wall. It's Uncle H put this in a long time ago, back in the uh, umpteen ages ago. So it's R22 on top of that. The other one, surprisingly, working just fine. All right, so we ended up getting the nitrogen out. Went ahead and put about 170 pounds on it area. we we'll grab the uh, leak detectors and find out where it's at. All right, it's been a while since I've used this thing, but uh, it's way too cold to be using bubbles out here, and I can hear it real bad right there on that 
you can tell obviously there's oil everywhere also there's oil up here on that uh, pressure control right there too you can see all the oil there on that so I'm gonna scan out the electronic on top of uh, the ultrasonic but I can hear this thing just a uh, ticking real bad right right there never stop though let's go inside and check the evaporator in there it's really cold out here so we're gonna have to use some uh, freeze proof uh, soap on that because it is way too cold out here for regular soap all right so the drill is not getting it off very good so because it's probably you know between 12 and 18 degrees out here so we're gonna heat it up with the hand torch I've got the pressure off of it and then we'll go ahead and see if we can clean it off with the brush wheel after that. It's just so thick from them painting it, and we'll see if we can rebraze this thing. You can see the problem was they soft soldered that stupid thing, which this is R22, and it was done probably 25, 30 years ago. So we got it all cleaned up, all good to go there. I'm just going to braze over it. Myself, personally, I've never had a problem brazing over that crap. So we're going to do that real quick, and then we're going to go ahead and Get that little cruddy filter dryer over there taken care of and then we'll evacuate this thing you know this is mineral oil so it's not uh, as big of a deal as what poe is still got to pull a good vacuum and all that but it's not as problematic as what the poe is what i'll actually do is just purge from the high side through and then push whatever's left in there out of it and then then do the brace job real quick so you can hear it coming through so we're like i said we're just purging it through you can tell if you get any type of disturbance out of it, which doesn't sound like I am. But this will help get us a quicker uh, pull down too, getting all the air and moisture and anything that might have accumulated, which I don't think it did uh, suck any air in because obviously the low pressure switch there would shut it down. But uh, we're going to go ahead and get that breeze real quick. So we got it in there. Basically, I just looped it over there and sucked it into the joint just like normal. The solder has a tendency to flow out. I smack it off with my rod. And uh, like I said, then I fill it in. You can tell that that's actual brazing there. And we're good to go. I'm just going to do a quick pressure test on to make certain. But uh, from what I see, we got it and it shouldn't ever leak again. So you probably wonder why is this box like this. But since they were on in the winter time, I'm going to say... They probably close this up a little bit because when I open it, it definitely brings in that cold air and the fan shuts off and they can kind of modulate it themselves. So we're just slowly charging this thing up. We got the vacuum done and uh, I don't have a filter dryer so we're going to have to change it later. Since the uh, dot indicator there on the uh, side glass is green, I'm not as worried about it. Never did really go down deep, uh, you know, it never actually went into a negative, so I'm not as concerned about it. Uh, I will probably change it when I come back, because I have to come back from one of the other pieces of equipment anyway. And uh, that'll give me a chance to get some uh, player dryers on my truck. I'm a little bit out on the uh, quarter inch ones. Got plenty of 3 eighths and half and 5 eighths and 7 eighths, but I don't have any quarter. Just kind of putting the green juice goblin back in there. Pressures are pretty much about where you would expect them at. It's cycling off pretty much right around the 100 degree mark. And our evaporator is running right in there at about 18 to 15 degrees. So it seems to me like it's tuned in pretty good. We're going to add a little bit more to it just to kind of fill up a little bit of that receiver there because it went solid just a little bit ago. Then I gotta reweigh my bottle and see exactly how much I put in there, and then I'm gonna mark that on this unit so we'll know for later.